It's always a funny thing when the judge looks at your uh, attorney and says, well, you know what? I'll give you this. That was really creative. <laughs> then denies your motion. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, bullshit. You're uh, whatever. It's that whole nice try. Good job. The yeah. effort. Uh, it's like, good job, little Brian. Now go do it the right way. Uh, that's uh, pretty much what happened in the <laughs> hearing of Brian Koberger last week. Excuse me. I'm coughing. I have horrible allergies right now uh and i'm laughing at the same time which i try to not do <laughs> but uh yeah it uh i watched uh, some of that uh earlier and uh it was it was pretty brutal i think uh to koberger uh in, in like not in a real like we mean and horrible way but just more like what, are you fucking serious like you really think that these arguments are of any sort of basis uh, yeah. So there was first the denial of dismissal motion. Brian Cubber's defense team. was laughing in the courtroom, like just a little. <laughs> well, what, what, what caught my eye was when I was looking at the video is, is there was a, a scene where the camera was right on the judge and he had this, this look of like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're wasting our time <clears throat> and money on this. Yes. Brian Cubber's defense team. Sought to dismiss the murder charges against her client, alleging grand jury bias, inadmissible evidence, and prosecutorial misconduct. However, Judge John Judge dismissed the arguments, referring to them as creative, but ultimately unconvincing. And they were creative. I will give them that. Uh, Ann Taylor was doing her job. Uh, I do have to say the other defense attorney for Co <laughs> Koberger, who is uh, on the, uh, obviously we're talking about, uh, he wasn't the most convincing of attorneys. I, I I was not impressed. And I haven't really heard Ann speak a whole lot other than some basic things, but I, I don't know. It was like, oh, Ann's a real, real, uh, in, I don't know. Maybe she is. Whoever the guy was, I, I felt he was kind of clustery and didn't really feel very confident in him if he was my attorney. Then there's the murder charges. Koberger faces four counts of murder. One count of felony burglary in connection with the stabbing deaths of the University of Idaho students. So none of that's going away. Uh, grand jury instructions was another issue that they wanted to bring to the table. The defense argued that the grand jury had been misled, claiming they were instructed to find sufficient probable cause for an indictment when a higher burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt should have been applied. The judge cited precedent indicating that the Idaho Supreme Court has upheld the lesser standard of proof for grand juries for over a century, which is true uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. If you had beyond a reasonable doubt, then you could convict somebody uh, with a grand jury. And that's not how that works. So uh, that's not, uh, I don't know. I'm just amazed that some of these arguments were even made or that time had to be wasted on them. Cameras in the courtroom and an unexpected ruling by the judge. I was surprised by this. Allowing cameras to remain. The decision was a point of contention between uh, both the defense and the prosecution. Members of the media and some victims' families have advocated for the presence of cameras to ensure transparency at the trial. And the victim's family perspective on it, an attorney representing the family of Kaylee Gonzalez stressed the importance of a public trial, stating it was vitally important that the trial be viewed publicly. The attorney emphasized that transparency is essential for the victims' families, community members, and the public to maintain faith in the justice system. Uh, the judge did agree, uh, but he did, uh, did with some caution uh, about the uh, cameras, uh, citing that he wants to uh, have more control over the uh, cameras in the courtroom, and he cautioned uh, the media about uh, trying the case in the media and hinted at the need for more control over camera activities in the courtroom. There was no issue with cameras in the courtroom other than... Uh, uh, Ann Taylor making a big stink because someone zoomed in on Koberger's unzipped pants one day. Which was, is a bit awkward. Really. Which is awkward. And I'm sorry if you're walking through the courtroom, people are looking at you. Yes, but no, but the camera itself didn't zoom to his crotch. Like the, the, the pool camera didn't do that. Somebody took a screenshot zoomed in and said, look, his pants were unzipped. That's not the media trying him. That's not uh, us going overboard. That's pointing out something that's kind of silly because it's there. 
So I, I don't see what the argument is about that. And they're focusing too much on him. He's the. I feel like that was a little bit. I mean, that was inappropriate. <clears throat> this is a murder trial. There are dead people. Yeah. Um, and and it it didn't. You know, let's be serious here. It, it is kind of my thought, but also we're all human. And well, who are you? You know, if he had toilet paper off, you know, yeah. hanging off of his pants or his shoe, we would have looked at that too. Well, who are we telling to be serious here? It's not like I mean, th these things were brought up on like TikTok. They were the point of contention on places like social media. It wasn't news organizations that were yeah. massively honing in on Koberger's crotch. I mean, maybe it was mentioned a time or two, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a very high profile thing. If something like that happens, it's going to happen. If the president walked out and his pants were unzipped, I don't care who it is, whether it was Trump, whether it was Biden, whoever, they're going to talk about it. If you're in a high profile position and your pants are unzipped, guess what? Not everybody's going to go, Oh, let's not say a word because that would be improper. Fuck no, they're not. Get over it. It doesn't mean the media is trying to crucify you. Uh, the media is simply making their uh, observations on this whole laundry list of insanity that is your life. And it doesn't look very good. The uh, yeah. uh, dismissal motion denied murder trial against Koberger still set to proceed. Uh, and we'll see when that happens. We do not have a uh, a date on that yet, uh, but there's still many more motions I'm sure to go through. We'll be lucky if we see it in 2024, but I'm, I'm thinking maybe late, maybe around this time next year, we'll finally get this underway. Not you think sure. so? I think it's going to take that damn long? Yeah, without a doubt. Ugh. I think there's going to be motion after motion after motion uh, from the defense. I mean, hopefully the judge just keeps striking him down and just sets a date, but... Who knows? There could be a lot that we don't know that will come in here yet. Uh, lots of uh, questions unanswered. I did have a theory on why he may have committed these crimes. And I okay. And I let's hear it. Let's hear it here for the first time. <clears throat> well, yep. Actually, you are because I talked with Siobhan about it uh, and it will air uh, in that interview uh, in the week. Here's a thought. It just kind of came to me the other day. Maybe it's crazy. Maybe it's not. So Koberger has had a whole life of not being able to connect with people. And he talks about that in his early writings that we've seen online, visual snow, not feeling emotion, uh, you know, very much a personality disorder that probably was never diagnosed, uh, but very much thinks of himself in a very grandiose way. He thinks he's the smartest one in the room and that everyone should be very, very much impressed by him. That doesn't work out very well when you're not the smartest person in the room in reality and you come across as a douchebag, uh, which he does. And women aren't very attracted to that. So he's always had trouble with women. We know that. That's fact. Mm -hmm. He's also studied criminal justice. Uh, and he's studied some of these characters that are behind bars. And an observation that we always make about the characters from behind bars are, wow, it's really strange that there's lots of women who want to write them letters. And want to have a relationship with them. Koberger had a mm -hmm. disdain for women. And my, I don't know if I'm, I'm not even saying this is my theory. It's just a thought. Okay. The thought is, uh, and another thing that ties into this before I say it, is we've looked at him a lot and gone, is he like enjoying this? Did he do this to go for the ride of experiencing what it's like? I think he did it to get a relationship with a woman. And the only way he could do that was from behind bars and being a notorious criminal. Wow. So, so my, this was, this might've been the master plan, not necessarily the killing, but the experience of becoming a notorious criminal. Well, the experience of getting in a, getting a woman to like him, I think is the goal. And, and feeling that because he, he couldn't attract anyone to have that. And I'm wondering if in his twisted way of thinking, he thought, well, look, Ted Bundy had all these girlfriends from behind bars and beat, name them. There's ton, everyone, every male, horrible human being who's behind bars has somehow have a small female fan club, which is insane. And he couldn't get it from living out in the public. You get it behind bars. But how do you go behind bars and become that horrible human being? Well, you got to do something pretty bad. And wouldn't it be convenient to go and kill some of the women that have rejected you and have that as a you know 
show them type thing and show society that they had what you know, that was coming to them or something of that nature in a twisted way of thinking. And he gets behind bars and suddenly the women start writing him letters. Wow. Crazy. Wow. It sounds crazy, but this whole thing is crazy. So uh, we can't discount anything, any, any theory. And yeah. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a weird one. It just kind of hit me the other day and I'm like, I don't know. That's just, it seems kind of crazy, but I don't know. It's, um, I think, I think it's plausible. But I don't know. We'll wait to see and find out. We'll probably never know the answer to that question, but time will tell. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.